Syrah Beauty is a luxury cosmetic brand that has a gondola, a display over at most Sephora locations. Unfortunately, a lot of it is on clearance now. So that either indicates it's going to be, the line is completely leaving Sephora locations or it's only going to be sold on Sephora's website. It's still determined. Syrah Beauty is actually a makeup artist line. It's founded by Mr. Troy Syrah, that's his last name. And he studied under Kevin Aquan. And when Kevin passed away, he actually went to Japan, was studying over there in uh, the country. And from that experience is where he drew in a lot of not only the Japanese culture, but just their craftsmanship, the way they have the, like, the quality ingredients, the sleek packaging and so forth. So he wanted to make sure that that was also like a part of his cosmetic line and that helped inspire it as well. I did take footage of the display. Wanted to kind of show you what is, well, at my location, what is still available. So if you happen to be in your local Sephora, you can check, see what's available as well. And they are selling the products at the same clearance prices on the website. I also picked up a few items, so that is what I'm going to share with you. Again, their strongest product. There is only one foundation in the line, and it is housed in this like click pen. You are able to find your color within the foundation in the click style pen. I welcome you to test it out. With my skin tone, I don't fit in a particular color range because of my undertone. So if you are able to at least try it out, I highly recommend you do because it is a formula that I feel is really good. It's it's very skin-like on the skin, undetectable, but it will build up in coverage. Next is the Surreal Skin Concealer. This has the same name actually as the foundation. I don't think I said the foundation name is Surreal Skin Foundation. Now the concealer, what is unique about this concealer is it's one of the concealers that is offered on the market where it will cover very fair skin. I did swatch the concealers. The lightest shade is borderline a white concealer. Just like with dark skin, the opposite spectrum, very fair. We're talking pale skin. It's also difficult to find. Most brands and most colors are right within that marketable, what they consider is the marketable skin tones. So beige and tan. I recommend a little goes a long way. When you have a concealer that is in like that stick formula, it's going to be a little bit more creamier, that more emollient concealer. So you want to make sure that you're using a little bit at a, at a time, spread it out and it will do the job. Next is a product that I feel is very coveted within this brand and it's their loose powder. Now with this brand as well, they like to make cartridges. Well, a lot of, I notice uh, Japanese companies will do that with their cosmetics. They'll have a cartridge and then they have it where it's refillable. I love that because I can just keep whatever I have as the main compartment and pop in the refill, which tends to be a lot more affordable than buying the whole thing. So this is their loose powder cartridge and I actually was very fortunate to be able to pick it up. Now what's very unique about this loose powder is, let me tell you about it. This powder is so incredibly fine. It is, you have to be careful with it because it will kind of go <laughs> all over the place if you're not careful with it. Now my Sephora did not have any more of the compact so I had to order it online so it is on its way and this, this will just go right inside. I was trying to be very careful when I was getting the shot footage for you to at least see the powder. It has this mesh top at the front, almost like a stocking, like um, think of like La Perla stockings. <laughs> That's probably what the material is because it's so luxurious and it covers it. So you just kind of tap and the powder kind of comes in. So there's no sifter, there's nothing. It's, it's a different container than what you're used to with just any other loose uh, powder on the market, you know, the sifter. It has a slight color to it, just very, it's so undetectable and it just, it just melts into your skin. It is a unique powder that would just kind of adjust with your skin tone, even though I feel it is colorless. But like when I was rubbing it on my hand, you know, it kind of looks like it has almost like, like I can detect a little bit of yellow in it, but then it just disappears onto my skin. It's, it's just, 
it's an incredible powder. There's absolutely no cakiness, no patchiness, no creeping into lines. It's a wonderful powder if you have mature skin or imperfections on your skin because it just, it sets but it enhances your skin. It really makes the skin look good. Next are the blushes and the highlighters. So I picked one each because that was what was available at the time at the store, inside the store. And then I have one of the highlighters being shipped to me. So very good deal, very good deal for these highlighters and the blushes. There's a ton of colors. I mean, well, they had on the website, but in person, like the on the display, there is, there's from pale pinks down to deep plum, there's yellow blushes. You would think that would be a highlighter, but it's a beautiful blush that warms up on the cheeks. The shade that was still available at my store, of course, is something what I would go towards like on an everyday basis. It's the shade Rougeur. I'm gonna butcher these names. See, it's just an everyday plum color. It's like a raspberry. It actually looks a lot darker in person than it probably looks like on the screen, but um, this is what I have on my cheeks today. Then I picked up this shade, which is the Coupe de Genie. And even though it says blush on it, you can use it as like a glowy blush if you want to. You can use it as a blush topper. But how I use it is actually as a highlighter. So you can slide it like that. And this is what it looks like. It looks like on my skin, it looks like what I would consider a, well, I, I kind of think a champagne pop. The, the shade from Becca. That's the shade I think of, but a lot more refined because this is a, a highlighter. Well, the Syrah highlighters, they are just, they're, they're beaming enough because you can build it up, but it still looks sophisticated. It still looks refined. It looks like it's glowing naturally. See, that's what I like about this line. Real quick, I wanna touch bases on the actual packaging for these because they have uh, cases like um, the cartridges that you can stick, well, actually, you have to use theirs. That's like the drawback is like Inglot, you have to use theirs to fit these in. They don't come magnetized on the back. I have leftover stickers from like my Z palette. So I'm just gonna stick that on the back of here and stick it in my uh, palette, magnetized palette. But just to give you a quick heads up, that's how it is. So if you see them at your local store, right next to the blushes, they have like the compartments for this to go in. Or you can do what I do, it's just, you know, make it work for your magnetize. I feel the product is worth it, but I definitely wanna let you know about that because you know not everybody's like that. Next comes the lip products. So what I have on my lips right now and the one I've had in my notes for ages is called In The Buff. The lip clusters come in like these, um, like the lippy stick type packaging, but it doesn't have like that slant tip to it, like color pops. It just looks like, you know, the twist up kind of like that. So again, this is in, in the buff. Now what I like about this shade is it has an undertone to it that is warm, that it will ex be accepted on my skin tone, but it has an overall, like a gold, like a yellow to it. There's no sparkle in anything. It's just a true nude. So what's great about this color is I can pair it with my brown like a darker brown. I can pair it with like burgundies, but I like to use this with cork. That's exactly what I like to do because I knew with cork, it will help kind of bring out that yellow tone because cork has similar shades to it. I feel it does. So I love it with Max Cork lip liner, or you can use it with their lip liner as well. There's two shades in the lip luster line, so the lip glosses. So I allowed myself two. Those are the two shades, color names that I had again on my list. I have a note on my phone. They have that ballet wand, so that's what I like. It has one side and then the other side already with the product on it. So you just turn it around and do the top lip, do the bottom lip and so forth. This color reminds me so much of Diamond Milk, that one from Fenty Beauty. However, this one actually, it does it more of a warmer tone on my skin tone where the Diamond Milk one, the more I wore it, it looks like, like white on my lips. So I just wasn't, 
I, I didn't like that one. This is another shade that was hard, I felt, to kind of get that reflection on the camera to kind of show you that yellow in it because it looks like it's like glitter, but it's not. And the second one is Tawn, and this one is very unique. Reason being is it's black. It's a sheer black tone, but it's not a, a black that's gonna be like scary on the lips. You can wear it by itself and it just is sheer enough where it just enhances your own lip color. So it's kind of like those, like, like the green lipsticks and the green glosses that kind of does that whole pH thing. It's not designed for that, but it's a color that I feel adjusts to whatever lipstick you might have underneath, or you can just wear it by itself. So it's a warm, it's a welcoming black, put it that way. It's my kind of black. This is also the color I have on top of In The Buff. So I put the cork liner on, put the lipstick and put this on top. And I just feel it also kind of brings out more of that yellow that I'm looking for. It's a great color and it's one I definitely recommend. There's other colors of course like the pinks and um, I don't remember if there's a red. I did swatch them all and an orange shade. So there's various shades. You can find one whatever is what you prefer but I knew for sure those are the two that I definitely wanted to pick up. There's brow products, there's mascaras, there's all other kind of products I was taking footage of but then I went down to the eyeshadows. Now the eyeshadows are on sale for $10. It's the same thing where it's not magnetized. So if you get any of the eyeshadows, be prepared again to use their case or put your own sticker on the back and have it go into your own palette. By the time I got to the eyeshadows, I was tired. So I just started to do the shades that were kind of appealing to me. I first went in for that yellow. And when you look at the actual uh, tester, they look like, oh, this one looks like it's gonna be a satin. Oh, this one looks like it's gonna be a shimmer. Or this one looks like a matte. But you have to try it on your skin, like swatch it, because what looks matte to me, I still see a sheen to it. So I feel that the, the mattes are not necessarily a true matte, 100% matte. It is gonna have going more into a satin finish. So I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. I'm gonna close it out with a Prisma Eye product. And this is something that unfortunately it came shattered to me. This is the second time I had to go to the store for Sephora for this product. So I'm just, I'm gonna take it back and I'm done with it. The first time was a different color inside and I didn't discover that till I got home. And then the second time is of course that is shattered. But I did use the pieces that were like scattered around it that's the um, what I have on my eyes just to get a feel of it and then I did use the like the base that's inside of it too and I don't feel that it's giving me that oomph that I want I can get something like the oomph with like glitter or from Colourpop super shop so that's what the route that I'm going to take but with this particular item and I think this is an item that is very confusing to people so I wanted to kind of break it down it's something where you know, you open it up, it looks just like a gel pot container. So you open it up and the first thing is you see the base inside. So I feel that the base is what is kind of confusing people. It should be underneath the product. Meaning when you open it up, you know, people want to see the actual product. They won't want to go, oh, the base, even though you put the base on first and then you can go to the product. I don't know, I feel it should be in reverse. That's just me. But with the base is, depending on which shade you get, some might look a little glossy, some might be darker, like for this color, uh, neutralize. It's a warmer orange type of a color, orange pink. So it will kind of make it oomph if you want that. So depending on what color you pick. With this one, Neutralize, this one has a darker base and it's it's still not giving that, that richness that I want for the shade. So it's kind of a, like, a Rubik's Cube. That's what I think of like um, back in the day, the Rubik's Cube. So it's kind of twisting it like that. But then you got to be careful too because if you do it too hard, like your finger can kind of... Um, you know, brush on it. That's what the Sephora employee did. She opened it up too quickly and then her finger went in. So it's it's something where, you know, you got to get the hang of it, which, you know, some people don't care about that. And for me personally too, I'm like, yeah, I don't like it where I got to be all 
careful at that because if I'm in a hurry, I'm gonna be like and fling it right off. So it, it's a nice look. It's a more of a subtle look, I feel, even though it's swatched a lot more bright, uh, vibrant on my hand, or excuse me, on my arm. So personally, I would not recommend the Prisma eyes, but again, it's a personal preference, personal choice. You don't even have to use the cream base if you don't want to. But I feel that just on its own, at least, swatching it on the arm, I liked how it looked on my arm versus how it looked on my eyes, and so not even for the clearance price that is going back. Have you been checking out any of their items in the store yourself? Have you seen the little red signs everywhere? You picked up anything or are you already a fan of this brand and you've been using their products? Whatever your feedback is, I would like to know. Please leave it down as comments. I do want to thank you for stopping by and watching this video. I do appreciate it. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful evening, and as always, I'm going to see you in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.